thank you. We'll open for any questions that you may have. Otherwise, you think you're criminalizing minorities with the firework because for 30 years I go to Narragansett and Newport everywhere, and you see the sky light up. The state fire and marshal, what are they doing here? This is for the city of Providence. If I want to talk about safety, oh, in Rhode Island we know rich people, a lot of police officers from here, from this department, do party with fireworks. I know they, they're friends of mine. Firefighters and a lot of politicians. Why we don't go after the rich people? Why just the poor people? So here's how it's driven. When we get complaints, somebody calls 911, somebody calls 272 3121. Into our communications, we respond and we track those numbers. I understand your point, but I don't care if it's on the east side or the west side or the south side in the city of Providence, it's dangerous. It ought not to be. So regardless of where you are, and if you're shooting them up in the city of Providence, there may be some consequences. They will be some consequences for that dangerous behavior. You the people, fire marshal, the people, state fire marshal, but the question is, in Rhode Island, for years, you go to the coast, you see people throwing fireworks in the sky all the time. You never go after the rich people. You never go after your own police officer who do party in Aragansi with fireworks. Well, that, that, that's a shame of the police department sending the message to the poor people in Providence for your own police officer do the party with fireworks and you don't say anything. So we need to apply the law to everybody equally. So that's my question, equally. Let me, let me respond. So if you are in the city of Providence, that's our authority and responsibility. If there are off-duty firefighters or police officers in another municipality, it's wrong for them to partic participate in any illegal firework. It's dangerous regardless of whether you're a police officer or a firefighter. And we don't have jurisdiction in, in Narragansett, obviously. And I can assure you that I've known the fire marshal's office for quite some time. And this is an approach that Providence took several years ago because of house fire, because of injuries, because of complaints in the city of Providence. We can only deal with what's in the city of Providence. And this has been the approach. And I can tell you when we send a message out to our public, it has an effect. We see it in the number of calls, the number of injuries. Again, we're appealing to our community that it's illegal if it goes up in the air. Don't do it wherever you may have gotten it from because there'll be a response for the very reason this task force has been assembled. We ask for everyone's cooperation so nobody gets summons. We don't have to send anyone anywhere in the city of Providence. Um, so we, you know, we only can manage Providence and I hear your point, but regardless of where you are in the city of Providence, if you're shooting illegal fireworks, there will be a response and there will be consequences. In the past few years, what is the average dollar amount for a fine and if you just throw a ball number out of how many per summer around the 4th of July, a uh, fine can you give out? Colonel? It, I'm not sure on that. Timmy, uh, how, how many did we cite last year approximately? Yeah, we don't know what they hand down as far as a uh, penalty, but that's a good number, 30. Yeah, typically around like the 500, 600. I'm sure it's less, you know, it's, you know, for a first offense. And, and I'm sure individuals who have more than one offense, multiple offenses, they, they jack it up, but I'm sure it's a low number. Are there any areas that are more prevalent to have uh, uh, complaints? So what we'll do on the hot spotting, a hot spot, mapping it changes every year so when we begin starting tomorrow night we'll see where the calls for service have been the last couple of weeks and we'll start there so it may be in the north end of the city or yes yes chief has that four, four is what i believe what they said as of, as of yesterday we had four permits for uh, selling of fireworks. Have you got about par for this year? Uh, we might see a few more, but that's kind of where, where we stand. We don't see an extraordinary, extraordinary amount. Yeah. There were 20 calls in 2019 and then 500 calls in 2020. Do you have any data on 2021 and how much you're expecting? Let me put it into context as well. If somebody hears something that sounds like a, uh, a firework, they'll call. And 
will respond. We may not identify either the house or the person, and it may not be an actual fire work that were fire works that have been exploded. So 500 are the number of calls. It's been driven down, we believe, by this task force. And so the number of calls, and it's a great message. Don't do it. A lot of people are confused about what's legal and what is illegal. It goes in the air and it explodes. It's illegal. It's pretty simple. We ask that they just comply for the safety of everyone that wants to enjoy this holiday. And Chief Coleman's talking about those hot spots. It's basically there's that just patrols kind of going through those hot spots and just, you know, checking if they hear anything, see anything. Is that kind Look, of it's, the it's the Look, yeah, it's the community reporting to us uh, the noise and the display in the sky to our communications, our 911 system. And, the, and, the, and so we track where they are. And so we will strategically, if we see an area with a large number of complaints, then we'll put resources in that area trying to prevent that kind of activity. I'm not sure if this is on your radar, but I just did a story yesterday about how supply chain, there are issues with fire, like legal fireworks suppliers getting them, and there's also inflation where they're like tripling firework costs. Does that lead to any sort of extra concern in regards to people getting them like under the table on the dark web? Sure, I mean, whether people take a ride to New Hampshire or now you can get it off the internet, wherever you're getting fireworks and whether you're spending a lot of money or a little bit of money, it doesn't matter. It's a nuisance and it's dangerous to people that don't know how to handle these things. They're not well regulated and people get injured and it's a nuisance for our community. So I, I also understand there's a supply a chain issue, but we're prepared whether there's enough fireworks, illegal fireworks, if they're in our community, there will, there will be a response. Just that, because these, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'll yeah. interrupt you there. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm excited about my question. Just because sparklers are legal in Rhode Island, historically, those are dangerous too, especially when drinking is involved or there are young kids. You know, what's your message just to people, even if they are going to use sparklers, they're not always going to be safe. Right. So common sense, right? You, you, you have a sparkler, don't put it in the hand of a five-year-old or a three-year-old or even a seven-year-old. They get awfully hot when they are lit and then they are extinguished. So the parents and friends and adults have to take responsibility for the legal fireworks. They are also dangerous and we have young kids being injured from that hot, you know, sparkler that may be legal, but it's still dangerous. So it, it's an awareness. Um, it's, it's something every year that we face, and uh, if the public can just understand the danger of some of these fireworks and just use their common sense to protect their family and friends and children. Thank you everyone, thanks for Thank attending, we appreciate it.